Chatelet Bridge Burners. Gonna talk a bit about Muay Thai today, again, and about how not all roads lead to Thailand. Oh, some of you aren't gonna like this video. Some of you might. Whatever. So, in the spirit of that, before I did Muay Thai, you know, I was training really hard and I wanted to pick a martial art and you know, I, was, uh, I was exercising every day for a long time, for years and years and I always did a bit more and a bit more and a bit more and I always wanted to do martial arts and then uh, at one point I had enough time and things were going good and I decided to pick one or you know to, to choose something that interested me and obviously I wanted to choose the most fucking, what I thought was the most badass one. What was the most efficient one, was the coolest looking one, what was the fucking hardest hitting one, and that to me was Muay Thai. And I really, I always liked boxing as well, so it was, it was a good mix of the two. And before I had even started, I was sure that, you know, I was gonna learn it, then I was gonna become an amateur fighter, and then I was gonna go train in Thailand, and then I was gonna go live there. And uh, yeah, by the way, I wasn't, I mean, I don't drink alcohol now really, but I wasn't smoking weed then either. Like I stopped, I stopped for a year or two, you know, before I started to train, even uh, before I started Muay Thai just to get my head clear and I didn't want to have any excuses and if I failed or whatever like that you know I didn't want to get out of breath anything like that so I, I didn't even smoke weed I perfectly fucking sober I didn't date either and I was convinced I was convinced that you know I was gonna learn Muay Thai here and I was gonna go to Thailand and then I was gonna sell all my shit and I was gonna live out of a fucking bag I was gonna sleep in the gym. And I'd be the white guy at the gym because I, you know, and like be become one of them. And I'd seen so many videos, and it was so cool. Just like, just like welding, okay? Like everyone that goes to welding school, practically 99% of the people they want to become an underwater welder. They all do. And like a third of them are gonna fucking drop out of class the first day. And when the teacher starts talking about safety, because they they're just like, oh, well, when do we get to weld underwater? You know or the police academy when do we get the guns you know fuck this shit so you know i wanted the gun and i wanted the prestige that went along with it and i thought that you know i considered myself a hard worker and i considered myself in good shape and everything like that so i thought it would be relatively easy for me to you know just do like the guys in the movies do and it wasn't it was really hard uh specifically for me and, uh, you know, I had, I still have uh, good stamina, but what it meant was that people just could beat the shit out of me for a long time. And I'm curious, and I ask a lot of questions, so what this meant was that uh, a lot of people just fucking found me annoying. So, my annoyingness combined with the fact that, you know, people could beat me up for a long time and they wanted to beat me up meant that I got beat up for a long fucking time, you know, and... But some people liked me, and you know, some people gave me tips, and you know, they would tell me that what I was doing was good, and to keep doing it, and to keep running outside of the gym, and to keep skipping, and to keep exercising, because even though I didn't look strong, I was surprisingly strong. And a lot of them would tell me in confidence that, yeah, I, you know, I'm not really looking forward to when you get to my level because you know I'm going to get tired a lot faster than you. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And anyway, this this was cool because after a while fuck I'm a very slow learner but how I noticed it was that the other person would just get tired and like like really tired and you know like you're sparring or whatever and then they just all of a sudden put their hands on their knees and they start huffing and puffing and you know it's like uh, I noticed it too I noticed it a lot still skateboarding you know because I skip rope and I run and shit like that and you know, I'll be at the skate park with someone else playing a game of skate in the sun. And it doesn't matter if they're 35, it doesn't matter if they're fucking 15. Like, 
most of these people they'll do a trick and then they'll need to sit down to catch their breath or because it's too hot they're just not used to it they haven't like trained for it but when it's really hot outside uh, i wear a fucking a sweatsuit with the hood on because I, I, I like to sweat i know boxers do it to cut weight but i do it to increase the intensity of, of the workout and especially once you start going a fucking certain distance now let's say you start doing like two hours of cardio every day no, it's a lot. You know, I, I don't want to increase that to three. I don't want to increase that to four. I don't have fucking four hours to fucking do cardio every day, and it's hard on my joints, fuck. So I found, let's say, two hours was like the maximum. So if I wanted to increase it, I would just add fucking layers. You know, and it, anyway, I'm going to make another video about the benefits of that. So anyway, I was training at this place, and things were going well. But as I was training there, like, I realized that Although I lived, breathed, and ate, and existed, fucking Muay Thai. This is gonna sound like a contradiction, whatever. But, you know, I, I was really into it and I loved it. But I still liked doing other stuff. You know? I like playing video games. And... I like talking shit with my friends. And I liked welding, and I liked reading, and... Man, I liked fucking walking my dog. Still, all the things I like to do today. I liked going out for breakfast with my fucking parents, you know, on the weekend, and I I liked uh, I liked going to bed, knowing that I didn't have to fucking go to the gym the next day. You know, I'd still train, but you know, it was just psychologically, it was a lot for me. And I realized that I didn't need to go to Thailand anymore. I didn't need to be a professional fighter anymore. I didn't need to fight in the ring. I was content just going to the gym and doing Muay Thai, you know, three times a week with my new friends, with my new brothers. And that that's what I liked. And I liked having a life outside of that. And, you know, at first we all thought the same thing. We all thought we're all going to get hardcore. And some people went to Thailand. And some of the people that went to Thailand to fight they're the people that just walked in to the class, uh, you know, wanting to to do like a kind of cardio workout, and they just really took to it. And they've been training there longer than I have, but that was like their story. Because sometimes I'd train with these guys and I'd spar with them, and it's like, yo, how many other martial arts did you do, man? I couldn't fucking touch you once. Like you, you're like a fucking butterfly, and that was fucking sick, you know. And so I realized I like doing other stuff. And as, as appealing of, as the idea was of becoming like a hardcore purist when I started, you know, I learned through experience that that just wasn't for me. And that I was happier. Uh, I was, I'm even happier now that I fucking left the gym. And because when I did that, I didn't have time for a lot of other stuff that I like to do. And anyway, there's other reasons too. I have a video about that also. But, you know, I was just happier balancing everything out. And... You know, you would assume, or I, I assumed always, that once you start anything, you know, the only logical fucking conclusion is to take it to the extreme. Or if you're successful at it, you know, or, at, or if you're successful at everything, you want to take everything you do to the extreme and be great at that and focus just on that. And look, that might be true for some things, but for this, for me, it wasn't. And I... I was way happier when I kept training, but I left the gym, and I started skateboarding again, and I applied, you know, what I had learned in martial arts to where I was having trouble with skateboarding, and, you know, I started socializing a little bit more, and, I don't know, life was just better for me, and there's another guy who went to Thailand, and he's still there, and life is better for him there. There's another guy that went, and he came back right away because he he went a little bit too hard in sparring his first week there and the other guy fucking knocked him out and gave him a concussion <laughs> sorry buddy but you fucking asked for it and that's the thing there you know there's always another fighter even if you win there's like a million fucking fighters to step up to beat the shit out of you and they love it they love fucking foreigners that think they fucking that think they got shit figured out and, and you might you might to a degree but like you know go enjoy that's all i'm saying and for me, I was way happier. Like, I, I knew I knew pretty early on, like, 
go maybe uh maybe i'm not ready to like have a garage sale just yet and it's a good thing i didn't it's a good thing i kept my computer it's a good thing i kept my playstation at the time anyway i don't really play anymore and it's a great thing i kept my skateboard so anyway uh that's my experience in uh, part of it in muay thai anyway and how the road did not lead me to thailand and you know it's a beautiful place obviously maybe i'll go there one day but it's not going to be a live in a muay thai training camp i'll fucking tell you that <laughs> so leave a thought in the comments downstairs i hope you guys all have a great weekend i'm fuzzy the Mom skates You're watching bridge burners tv like share subscribe and chatelet